Hello, and welcome back to Battle Plan, a podcast focused on spiritual warfare. I'm Steve Hemphill, and Battle Plan is an ongoing discussion of how we put our faith into action. Our website is active-faith.org. My email is stevehemphill1 at me.com. In our last episode, we talked about our 2023 city staking event coming up January 28th in Longview, Texas. Love to have you pray for us or attend, learn how to stake your own city or be a part of it if you're from our city or nearby. Today, we're going to ask a question that I've never heard asked in a in church service. Does God still give anointings today? Isaiah 45, verse 1, NLT, says, This is what the Lord says to Cyrus, his anointed one. Now, Cyrus was the king of the, of the uh, nation that conquered Israel, Babylon, and they uh, were letting, uh, Cyrus himself was letting the Jews come back to the land and even financing the rebuilding of the temple in the city of Jerusalem. So here he is, he's not even a Jew, and he's anointed one. But you remember all through the Old Testament, every priest was anointed, every king was anointed. Anointing was a sign that they were set apart as holy and special and uh, set apart for work definitely directly for God. Hebrews 1, verse 9, NLT says, You love justice and hate evil. Therefore, O God, your God has anointed you, pouring out the oil of joy on you more than on anyone else. So I have a personal story with the word anointing in it. This is a strange story. I'll just tell you right up front. I'm a little uncomfortable sharing it, but I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. And you decide if God still gives anointings today. Many of you know, I guess everybody listening to the podcast knows, I'm very involved in a in a ministry that God has put me in the middle of on spiritual warfare, helping people to deal with and be, being equipped to deal with the problems and, and fears and, and attacks in the modern world using the scriptures of God as our weapon and many other prayer plus things, prayer plus uh, oil, prayer plus fasting, prayer plus touch, prayer plus a spoken binding or spoken rebuke. There's many of those. We're talking about those along the way in the podcast too. Um, so it's obvious that God is blessing what I'm doing. He's opened doors for me. You know, I'm nobody. I didn't even have a, uh, I didn't even have a, 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 a degree in missions or Bible. I had a marketing degree and yet I was in a Bible student my whole life, even from early, early childhood. My dad was a scholar and a Bible major. And uh, he, he was a missionary and a preacher and a, a church leader for many years until he passed away in the summer of 2000. Um, but the word anointing didn't seem to apply to modern day situations. So imagine my surprise being an ultra conservative, you know, background person as far as church and Christianity goes. Imagine my surprise when in a two week period last year, two ladies called me from different states. They don't even know each other. I know both of them. Uh, One of them I know as a friend. The other I just know as an acquaintance because I met her at one of my speaking events. But they both within two weeks called me and asked the exact same question. And the question had the word anointing in their question for me. So that threw me off at first. I had to kind of digest what they asked me. me. Let me tell you what they said. Two weeks apart, both of them called me and asked the exact same question worded in the exact same way do you realize they said do you realize god has given you an anointing to do what you're doing now i just told both of them immediately two weeks apart i told them the same thing initially when they asked me that exact question i said i don't really like to use the word anointing on me because it feels like I'm trying to say that, that that God thinks I'm better than someone else or that that I have a special connection to God that they don't have. I don't believe in that. I think we're all equal. It's level at the foot of the cross. And so I said that to both of these ladies. They don't even know each other. They asked me the exact same question two weeks apart last year. Do you realize God has given you an anointing on your life to do what you're doing? And I said, well, 
yeah, I guess sort of, that's one way you could say it, but I don't like to use that word because it sounds like I think I'm better than somebody else. And they both said the same thing. They said, you're right. It doesn't mean you're better. It just means God endorses and is helping you accomplish what he wants you to accomplish with that ministry. And I go, okay, well, I'm uncomfortable with that. Then both of them made a statement and asked a question, and they both had the exact same statement and asked me the exact same question two weeks apart. Here was the statement. They both said, God told me when he gave you that anointing. Now that really piqued my attention. I'll just put it that way. It piqued my interest. And then they both said the same exact question to me, two weeks apart. They don't even know each other. Do you want to know when God gave you that anointing? I said yes, both times. However, the second time I said yes, I was anxious to see if the answer matched the first time I said yes. And let me tell you, it did, word for word. When I said yes, I'd like to know when God gave me that, they both said the exact same thing. They said he gave it to you when you burned the envelope. When dad died, he left that envelope in the safe saying, don't open this if you find it after I'm dead. Addressed to me and my brother. And it's in the early podcast, the first couple of podcasts of this series of battle plan. They said, when you burn the envelope, God said, okay, good. I can trust this guy. And that really floored me. There's two witnesses it takes two witnesses to confirm something, right? You need two witnesses in court. Bible required two witnesses. Early Jewish tradition required two witnesses. By the way, they couldn't be women uh, in, in the Old Testament times, but Jesus changed that. His first witnesses were women. Both these were women. Do you realize God has given you an anointing to do what you're doing in spiritual warfare? God told me when he gave you that anointing, do you want to know when it was? Yes, I do. He gave you the anointing when you burned the envelope. That's when God said, I can trust this guy. Now let's move forward. You know, you just can't make this stuff up. So in a lot of today's thoughts, let me suggest part of your personal battle plan might be to ask God what he has anointed you to do. You know, everybody can reach somebody for the kingdom that no one else can reach. And if you don't speak up, they might not be reached. Maybe you could pray like this. Lord, open my eyes to my own personal anointing. Help me to clearly see and understand my mission for your kingdom. Then give me a heart willing to follow through and the energy and opportunity to get started. In Jesus' name. See you next time on Battle Plan. We're going to ask a question, uh, a bizarre question. Many of mine are bizarre questions. I'll admit that. Can a violent dream hurt a real person in real life? Tune in next time. Now, let me remind you to keep praying because prayer works. God loves you and I love you. Have a great day.